if you're given the degree of a polynomial function, we can say some things about the graph of that polynomial function without even having to graph it. Also, if you're given the graph, we can determine, depending on what it looks like, what degree the polynomial, fun polynomial function might be. And we're going to use these two facts. If you know the degree of a polynomial fu function is n, then at most, at most, your polynomial function can have n zeros. So if the degree is 5, your polynomial function can at most have 5 zeros. It might have 1, it could have 2, it could have 3, 4, or 5, but it cannot have more. It can have at most that number of zeros. Also, with the turning points, which we also know as the, these are relative mins and maxes. So these are the relative mins and maxes. And actually, what those are, are just the tops of hills and the bottom of the valleys. So those are the tops and the bottoms of those round bumps. And if you know the degree is n, guaranteed, your polynomial function can have at a maximum n minus 1 turning points. So let's look at a function that we already know. If we look at a function, let's say, f of x equal to x squared minus 4. Just a real quick sketch of this graph, and it's not going to be entirely correct, but we can see it's going to look something like that. We see that this function here, f of x equal to x squared minus 4, the degree of the function is 2. That tells me, at most, my function can have two zeros. Most can be, it can have is two. It might have less than, and we've seen polynomial functions of degree two that have had less than two zeros. I'm going to draw that here in red. This would be a polynomial function of degree two. It's a parabola. It has less than two zeros. And we also know there's another case when it has one zero when the vertex is on the x-axis. So what we see here are the three possibilities of a degree 2. A function, polynomial function of degree 2 can have, at most, 2, 1, or 0 zeros. And remember, zeros are just our x-intercepts. So if you know the degree, you know the choices that it can have. There are no possible ways for us to have a degree of 2 and have it cross the x-axis more than two times. The turning points are just the tops of the hills and the bottom of the valleys. And what I mean by that in terms of a quadratic function, a degree 2, it means vertex, right? It's the top of the hill. It's the relative minimums, as if we're talking about a parabola that opens up, or the relative maximums for a parabola that opens down. If you know the degree, which we do, our function has a degree of 2, then it can have, at most, n turning points. And we see here that these functions, all three of them, have one turning point. Let's look at another example. This is a common question that you can be asked about polynomial functions. If you're given the graph of a polynomial function, you want to be able to find what the minimum degree that polynomial function could represent, the graph of that polynomial function could be. So what we need to look at are the zeros, and we also need to look at the turning points. And that will help us illustrate what the minimum number could be. So let's go through and count the zeros. It looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have four zeros. And let's go through and count the turning points. Turning points are we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. We have five turning points. So, what is the minimum number or the minimum degree that this could be? Well, our choices, really, we know that if it's a degree of 2, so let's list some possible degrees. 
degree. We know it can't be a degree of 2. Because if it's a degree of 2, the maximum number of zeros it can have is, is 2. Right? It can't have more. If you know the degree, if the degree is 2. At most, it can have two zeros. So we know that it can't be 2. Same reason why it can't be 3. Because if it's a degree of 3, at most, it can have three zeros. And this polynomial function has four zeros. So it can't be three. Could it be four? Well, we see here that this has four zeros. So just looking at the zeros, we could potentially say that this has a degree of four. But remember, a polynomial with degree four can have up to four zeros, but the maximum number of turning points it could have would be 4 minus 1. So the maximum number of turning points it could have is 3. And we see here that this polynomial function has 5 turning points. So it cannot be degree 4. And the reason why, again, yes, it can have up to 4 zeros, but this polynomial function can only have a maximum, if it's a degree of 4, it can only have a maximum of 3 turning points. Could it be a degree of 5? It can't be 5, and for the same reason, right? Yes, if it's a degree of 5, it can have at maximum 4 zeros. It could have 1, could have 2, could have 3, could have 4, could have 5, can have more than 5. So, zeros, that's okay. But we know if it's a degree of 5, the maximum number of turning points it could have is 5 minus 1. So it turns out it cannot be that either. So what about 6? We're just going to keep increasing here. If it's a degree of 6, the zeros are satisfied because we could have 4 zeros. And the turning points of degree of 6 can have 6 minus 1 or 5 turning points. Could be 6. So there we go. That's our minimum. This is just a kind of a guess and check kind of a way. And what we can see here is we look at the largest number between the zeros and the turning points, and that's going to help us dictate what the maximum degree or the minimum degree it could be. We know at the very minimum it has to be degree 4 because it has four zeros. But turning points says, you know, if it has five turning points, the minimum degree it could be is 6 because it can't have a degree of polynomial n, or excuse me, a polynomial of degree n can only have n minus 1 turning points.